<laughs> Hello my friends, Biggs is back again. Now if this is your first visit to my channel, thank you kindly for stopping by. If you're one of the regular member of the amazing people that I call the horde of the lair of Biggs, thank you for stopping by again my friends. So today, you guys know about these isopods. These are the Mariluna tricolor. These are an incredible species of isopod from Vietnam. And you guys, we've done a few videos on these isopods. The first video we did was when we first got them. We set them up in this beautiful nature-inspired bioactive vivarium. It still is uh, nature-inspired. It still is bioactive. But it looks like a desolate wasteland. And for such an awesome isopod, I think we need to redo it a little bit. But I got some ideas. I got some new stuff. Let's take this over uh, to the workbench, which is basically the, the table in the living room. <laughs> And uh, let's take a peek. So as you can see, it's not really the thing of beauty. I guess it does look, uh, you know, it's very, very nature inspired for, uh, I guess, my climate in the fall. But uh, this definitely does not look, in my opinion, what this animal would experience in, in the, the jungles of, say, Vietnam. It needs a lot more moisture content. It's going to need a lot more plant growth. You know, all the mosses are dry on the surface. You know, the ground below is moisture retentative. And there's why the Maroon is there. So there's a lot of moisture in the ground, but it's just not really what I wanted it to look like. So we're gonna do some changes. So let's take a peek at what we've got here. So all the basic accoutrements that the animals need are present within their substrate. We've got all sorts of leaf litter. We've got mosses, we've got lichens, we've got calcium sources. We've got lots of different types of rotting wood. Even the pieces of wood that are used in here are all decaying. So these are often the favorite spots of some of the animals. There's a bunch of them on that piece there, right there. But uh, we want to kind of clean it up a little bit. No, not necessarily clean it up, but make it look a little bit better. So what I want to do is I want to import some greenery. So I have several of these different rabbit foot ferns. They're just in small little four inch pots. Whether we use them all or we just use one or two, I don't really know yet. We're going to see how it looks. I've got a couple of different species or uh, variants of Fritonia. Uh, these are often referred to as nerve plants. They have a lot of real unique colors and textures and stuff. Sorry for the shadows. I got the light basically pointing down mostly on the terrarium, you know, but you get an idea, a lot of, lot of color and texture. We have some nice, uh, uh, this is called pillow moss. Now I'm not as much a fan of this as I am of the sheet moss because this is just so thick and dense, uh, but we'll probably use a couple of pieces of this. It's just currently just sitting in reverse osmosis water, hydrating again. I went and collected some uh, some nice uh, oak branches because as I've mentioned before, that particular little stick that we've shown you multiple times seems to be like their jungle gym. So maybe we want to incorporate a bit more of that. I've got my pruning shears to be able to nip some pieces off to make it fit, make it look just right. And then I also went through my bark uh, tubs, which I use for all the different isopods and stuff. And I found all these beautiful pieces with different mushrooms on them, which is often a food source, dried mushrooms, different types of mosses. And, of course, lichens, which are always a favorite of the animals. So I think it's time. Let's take a peek. Let's see what we can do. So because this is a, a tropical species, temperatures are being met in the room without any issue whatsoever. But the moisture gradient, basically the air and the, and the humidity level around in the enclosure, not just below the substrate, is where we tend to be lacking. Now, the problem, other facets, is because this is a full living system, I do not want to really take a lot of this material away. I basically want to just add to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take out some of the pieces. I've got a Tupperware just to the side here. We're going to take out a couple of pieces and we're just going to transfer them to this, this other Tupperware just to make sure that we're not going to be, there's a bunch of them there. Because I really don't want to uh, disturb them too much, but I also want to make sure, as I've mentioned in other videos, this tends to be the one species that, uh, we find in the house with the most frequency. Uh, so I'm really kind of tempted with the idea of not trying to remove as much product as I can. This is like a food source for them, so they'll definitely use these products. And looking at uh, trying to get the idea of where we want to place stuff. Now, as I mentioned, I have these two uh, nerve plants. I think I'm going to go with the red one today. And when I probably take it out of its pot, it's probably going to be several little plugs instead of one solid plant. I'm not really certain where it's going to go. 
I'm looking at the ID. I played around a little bit with the twigs just off camera, so I didn't spend hours trying to do this without, but I kind of came up with this one here. I've already kind of trimmed it down a little bit with my shears, just so you know everything's going to be at the height. You'll see the finished product from uh, from the from the front. That's the way you're going to view it. You nobody's going to be viewing it from above. But because these are the ones that escape the most, I figured this is the easiest, easiest way for me to work with them and contain them. If this was an empty vivarium with no animals, I would just work at it from the front without any question. But because of this, I want to make sure that I keep my animals contained. I can already see in my Tupperware there's a couple of dozen of them already scurrying about. So I'm looking at, I like the idea of that there. I'm liking the idea of maybe putting some, uh, some, some punch of color kind of right in this area here. A couple of ferns there and maybe a fern here. That's kind of the idea. And then remember, we still have those pillow mosses, which will act as kind of sinks for, uh, for moisture. Maybe we'll tuck one around that. We'll put them around the ferns, same sort of thing. I really want to get away from this dried, dead-looking stuff here. <laughs> something more worthy of these incredible isopods. At least till springtime, because right now that's honestly all I have for lichens and mosses and so forth, other than store-bought, but naturally harvested in my opinion is always better. So, I absolutely love how it all came together. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Definitely looks better than it did before. And I'm actually a fan now of that pillow moss. I think it looks really good in this setting. So that, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.